All right, morning show with Anthony here on 92.9 and 96.9 EHM. Happy to have my next guest on the phone, a uh, member of the E Street Band, and a uh, blossoming solo career going on. Jay Clemens joins us on the morning show with Anthony. Jake, how are you, my friend? I'm doing great. I'm doing awesome. Thanks so much for having me on. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Is blossoming solo career, is that a, do you feel that? Do you feel like you have a blossoming solo career, or have you already blossomed? <laughs> I would hope it's still blossoming. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's uh, I'm really excited right now. It's um, it's a really thrilling time. Uh, just to be putting out a sophomore record is really big for me. Um, and uh, yeah, we put a lot into this one, and, uh, and and hopefully it's received well. Okay, first thing that grabs me before I even start listening to the album is the red. I love the album cover. It's a red background. You in a red jacket. What's what's the what's the uh, the uh, the design choice there with the red. Yeah, you know the, the record has a sense of uh, of urgency to it, I suppose. Um, you know, and, and a bit of angst as well. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of a it's an alarming time, and uh, and the record kind of conveys a lot of that in it. So uh, it just seemed like a an appropriate choice. I got it. So it's like red, like like a warning, like a siren, like this is the time right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I got it. That's cool, man. Uh, Jay Clemens is with us here on the morning show with Anthony. I did notice like that. That was one of the differences I noticed from the first record from um, the first record that you put out. uh, Fear and love. Mm -hmm. The like that has like this like calming bluish green cover. And this has like (laughs) this red cover. And here's the other thing I noticed. I feel like you were a little bit more piano heavy on the first record than you were on this record. Yeah. Yeah, there's a good chance of that. (laughs) Um, Yeah, the the first record was really introspective, you know? It was like, it was me dealing with my own personal inner psyche, you know, my my own issues with with fear and and recovering from those and finding my way towards uh, how to love fearlessly. And, you know, that's just a very personal... Um, situation. This is like definitely more outward looking, and, um, and and it's a record that hopefully gets a lot of people's attention in terms of uh, you know the things that we are dealing with. Um, I was really keen to point out some of the issues that I'm seeing out in the world, and um, and and wanting to grab uh, again like to grab people's attention and say like, hey, this is this these are these are problems that we can all agree on, um, and that we all need to address, and. Um, and uh, yeah, so you know, it's a it's just a completely different vibe from, from the last record. <laughs> uh, there's plenty there's plenty of material there to choose from when you're looking at world issues right now, too. I mean, yeah, there's a lot there. I wonder, like you, you're not even forty yet, but I would imagine that you have such a different perspective than anybody else in their thirties because you've traveled the world so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe so. Um, I definitely have, uh, have tried to live my life with my eyes wide open and, uh, and to have a, a clear, you know, view as to what I'm seeing around me and, and, and as I've grown older. And uh, we, for sure, like growing up, being a young kid in, in, in the 80s um, was definitely different than being a young kid in the 90s. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean... For sure, man. Look, I'm, I'm with you there, too, but I never shared the stage with Paul McCartney or Bruce Springsteen or Roger Waters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I no, mean, you know, I, I, it's such a gift to not only um, to not only like you know be able to meet these people and play with these people. I mean, that's incredible. But you know, beyond that, to to, to be given a foundation to um, to take like a deep dive on 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 their careers and, and who they are. You know, be, the, one of the great things of, of traveling with uh, with East Street is um, is the lessons I get on the road. You know, a lot of it being um, you know who the forefathers of rock and roll are. Um, and what makes them so significant. And uh, those con- conversations have always been invaluable. So, uh, yeah, not just playing with those guys, but like getting to know uh, about them in a way that I wouldn't necessarily be exposed to um, without that kind of a, uh, 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 a let's, let's call it a, a classroom setting, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I mean, I feel like most people you know, they go through their lives and they, you know, as they're growing up and it's a lot of like, you know, kitty music and then it's a lot of the pop stuff. And then at a certain age, you discover something, whether it's Zeppelin or the Beatles or Bruce or, you know, whatever it is, you sort of discover that stuff. 
did you have the same trajectory or were you on that stuff a whole bunch more earlier because of, you know, your uncle and everything? Yeah. You know, I actually had probably the the opposite um, trajectory early on. Uh, I grew up in a really, really strict household, so I wasn't allowed to even listen to rock and roll when I was a kid. Wow. Um, you know, it was, it was gospel music and marching band music and classical music, and that's it. So um, for me, the, you know, the voyage was very unique in that sense. Um, but I saw my first rock show when I saw East Street play when I was eight. And, um, and I didn't see another rock show for many years after that. Um, but I definitely, ha- it definitely piqued my interest. And when I started to explore different sounds, um, yeah, that kind of allowed me just to crack my world wide open. Cause I didn't have any, any point of reference, um, other, other than that. So, uh, yeah, it was, you know, it's been an exciting journey. So I, you- I continue to like look for things that are different and that I, that I haven't heard yet. Yeah, man. So you didn't know. So were you close with your uncle prior to eight years old? Did you know what he did? Yeah, for sure. But I didn't really understand what he did. Right. You know? um, it's the kind of thing where, like, whatever your uncle does, you don't necessarily see him at work. You know, whoever your uncle is, you don't necessarily see him at work. You, just, you know, you have an idea of what he does. And um, and it was definitely skewed uh, for me because I didn't know it was different. You know, I didn't know that other people didn't you know that their uncles weren't on the radio to me that seemed normal um but uh but yeah i I never saw him at work you know until i was a little older so right well listen um, i never saw my uncles at work but i'm italian it's a different background we have those are different you know (laughs) every time i asked one of my uncles what they did for a living they told me to mind my business so it's a different thing you know what i'm saying jake (laughs) I understand. That's the end of the conversation, right? <laughs> That's so funny, though. Yeah, because you you just you you can only see the world through your own set of eyes, and it's so funny. Like you don't yeah. you think everybody's uncle's on the radio? You think everybody's uncle plays like your uncle played? Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's- that's so crazy to think about. Well, that's interesting too because I can't believe that you only listened to gospel music when you were growing up when in those early days because you know, I go through and especially on this new record and I hear and it's funny that you have Tom Morello on the record because I hear like in Consumption Town I hear Rage Against the Machine, you know, in Swan Song I hear <laughs> Gil Scott Heron a little bit. You know, like I hear all these why different influences so did you dive into yeah. that stuff once you finally got exposed to music yeah um man yeah I, I i was i was 12 or 13 when i was uh forced to listen to my brother's music in his car he was um you know several years years older than i am uh like seven or eight years older than i am so he was in university and uh got another copy of nirvana nevermind and um you know just as, a, as an example I had never heard anything like that, and as far as I was aware, that was just like what your TV does when it's broken, you know, like this noise is like distorted. I didn't know what it was, but I, I was stuck in the car and uh, trying to keep my sanity, <laughs> and, um, and and by the time I was like on the verge of, of losing my mind, I, I, I tried to find some sense of um, you know, what's good about that sound, because clearly people loved it, uh, and when I grasped that, I, I, they were my favorite band after that. And that's kind of how I approached music from that point on, you know. Um, so I just, I was hungry to discover as much as possible. And, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, from, from decade to de- decade, um, just, just, just consuming as much music as possible and, 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 and taking in uh, all these different styles and genres that I could. Yeah. All right. See, I don't, let me ask you this, because you brought up Nirvana. I don't know if this was... I don't know if the world was like this or just my group of friends were like this, but it was kind of Biggie Tupac in my little world. Like you were either yeah. Nirvana or Pearl Jam. Did you have that sort of split? Are you, were you like in Nirvana's camp all the, like I always liked Pearl Jam, but I loved Nirvana. And what's funny is right. the older I get, I've kind of flipped on that. Now I kind of <laughs> obsess over Pearl Jam more these days than I do Nirvana. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, well, they got a few more records out. That's for sure. Well, yeah, um, yeah, longevity. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I, I, I was actually in a similar camp that, that you were in at that at that, at that point in time. Um, you know, my my first record that I ever purchased, um, as, as obscure as this might sound, was uh, was Snoop Dogg Doggy Style. Um, <laughs> nice. And uh, you know, so it, was, it wasn't until uh, until a little later that you know I did the deep dive on on rock and roll um, and. Uh, yeah, I wasn't really in an environment where 
where that was going on. I'm aware of it now. Like I know talking to people now that like there was a big split in terms of uh, you know what who who the godfather of grunge would be. Um, but uh, no, I, I was I was fortunate enough to be able to appreciate everything. You know, I mean. God, I remember watching the video for Jeremy when that came out and just like not knowing what to do with myself, you know, it was just an incredible piece of art. And, um, you know, same thing with Nirvana. I mean, like that, never mind that record is, uh, is, is, uh, never mind in 10, if you're, if you're going grunge, I mean, like they're, 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 they're symbiotically important. It doesn't get better. Yeah, I know. I'm totally with you. It's funny that you brought up the, the video too for Jeremy because, um, I'm trying to think. What was the video I watched from yours already? Was it Consumption Town? It was Consumption Town. Jesus, this thing is amazing. Who did you get to help you put this? Uh, I um, love this animation style that you have in that video. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, that's a, this amazing talent um, out of Ireland. Um, yeah, uh, Hairpin Productions. Uh, a friend of mine there uh, you know, offered to help out and uh, with, with some artwork. And she's just... She's a she's a savant, you know. She's she's really incredible, and um, you know we talked about ideas and uh, concepts, and she just pulled it together. The, uh, I'm, I'm super grateful. She did a fantastic job. Really, really good. And it's funny too because like in the '90s, I feel like when MTV was dominating the visual side of music, and in the '80s too, but the visual side of music was so important. I feel like we're back there now because of YouTube and Facebook video and all that stuff. Don't you? Do you feel the same way? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and maybe even in a different way, I think there's liberty to be more artistic with, um, you know, your visual concepts now uh, because you have your own platform. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to sell it to MTV. Um, right. It's just your own track. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to worry about cool censors time. or whatever. You can just do whatever the hell you want to do and not right. worry about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is what I wanted to ask you too, Jake. Like, like so I, I listened to, you know, the first record when it came out. I listen, I'm uh, listening to this record. I got an advanced copy. Thanks for that, by the way. Um, <laughs> don't worry, I didn't give it to any of my uncles, so you're safe. Uh, <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> but um, I, I, I wonder if on the business side of things, you know, you ever run into any struggles because you're you seem to be one of these artists that can dabble in all these different genres and it's hard to sort of pinpoint like to, it's hard to kind of put these records in a box and be like this is this type of music you know what i'm saying do you ever do you have these conversations with the people around you about what you're producing man to be honest with you i've i've dreaded that conversation um <laughs> you know, as long as i've been you know, putting out music, uh, and I've been really fortunate to not run into it yet. So I'm kind of knocking on wood that that doesn't become an issue in the future. You know, for me, it's just, I write in every kind of uh, genre that 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 fits, you know, the the concept of, of, of the sound and, and, and of the song. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm grateful to not have to worry about being limited in that way. Yeah, I think if it again, if it were the '80s or '90s, it, it might be a different story. Um, but uh, yeah, you know. I, I'm I'm kind of a pure artist in that way. Like I, I have to be true to what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing and what I'm feeling. And uh, yeah, it, I might not have had a, a career 20 years ago because of that. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm grateful that even the audience, you know, is, 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 has been really receptive to it. And to be honest with you, it, it makes the shows so much more dynamic too. Um, you know, that allows me the freedom to be able to play a longer show in some cases because. Uh, you know, there's not that reputation there. Um, there's a lot of sonically different experiences in the show, so it's a it's a it's a, it's a great uh, piece in, in in the in the tool book, if you will. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Uh, I'm, Jake, I'm great for it. Jake Clemens is with us here. Eyes on the Horizon is his new record, which is in stores today. Uh, you're playing the Stone Pody tomorrow night. A couple things I want to yeah. ask you about. Um, <clears throat> you know, between your career and Bruce. You just mentioned shows, you know, you, you put yourself on the stage with the E Street Band, there's 17 hours of material to choose from when you go out mm. on the road with, a, with you know, especially from your first record, now you have two albums worth of material, so it's probably not as bad. Do you have that anxiety of like, oh my God, how am I going to fill a whole set list together? <laughs> no, uh, no, I'm grateful to not have that issue. Um, I write a ton and uh, you know, my poor band... Um, 
it's, uh, they've got so much more material to learn than what's than what's out there. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, you know, it's a for me every night. It's a it's well, first of all, I should say everything I know about the live stage performance. Um, you know, the 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 impetus of that was born by watching E Street. And, um, you know, the lessons I've taken home from just even, you know, from my early adulthood to today, watching Bruce do his thing um, and, and his command of of the uh, the emotion in the room and the connection in the room um, is uh, those are my those are my biggest lessons, you know, and uh, and that applies directly to my own um, my own stage, you know, my own performance. Um, yeah. So, you know it's a story that's being told in the moment and uh it, it may be you know five songs off the new record it might be 10 songs off the new record um who, who knows but it's a it, it's a woven experience um and uh and a lot of material that's not recorded yet so it's uh it's always exciting that's really cool uh jay clemens is with us uh tour dates and everything else jayclemens.com tomorrow night stone pony in asbury park um, here's my other question too, in conjunction with Bruce, I'm sure, I mean, I've been in this business for a really long time, Jake, I'm sure. And I know what yeah. it's like touring. I'm sure touring with the E Street band, uh, comfort level wise is a lot different than when you're out touring your own record. Do you find a difference there? Well, yeah, there's, uh, there's vast differences for sure. <laughs> um, but the, the funny thing is it's hard, it would be hard for me to say which one's easier. Um, you know, the, the comfort level is one thing, I suppose, um, but but in terms of the easiness, um, you know, when I'm out with E Street, it's a it's such a big production, um, and there's just not a lot of uh, like like leeway to kind of do your own thing sometimes, um, especially because like you know we're in these big cities, there's sixty thousand people at a show, that makes it hard to go to dinner, you know, right. um, and have like a nice cat for dinner, um, <laughs> that kind of thing. Difficult, you know. When I'm playing a show for like 600 people, it's not always a, a concern. I can, uh, I can, <laughs> I can, I can find a way to have a nice, relaxed environment. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, if I want to, if I want to stop for a specific meal along the way, that's not a problem. Uh, right. So it's, it's kind of it's, that's that's the nice part about being, uh, you know, being being the boss, if you will. Um, but uh, that said, uh, yeah, the conveniences are, are much more significant uh on the east street run <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure the snacks are a little bit more plentiful and on the travels oh for sure yeah for sure yeah uh, and we have yet to stay at a hotel with bed bugs so uh <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a big difference <laughs> Jay clemens is with us here on the morning show with anthony eyes on the horizon is the new record which is out today um Here's one thing I want to ask you too. I guess this is sort of Bruce related, but I mean it's been a it's been an interesting year because you know the band's been off and and you've been able to do this. Like, do you find that to be I don't know frustrating is the right word, but do you find like being in the E Street Band, do you find it to be a little challenging? I guess to find time to you know put out because I mean I guess what most people don't understand is putting out a record is an ordeal. You have to record it. <laughs> You know, you have to shoot the videos, the the album design, the promotion behind it, the tour. Like it's a it's a month month on month on month long product. It's like a huge ordeal. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And when yeah. you're in a band, like it's, I got to imagine it's kind of hard. Like, how does that work for you? Do you ask Bruce, like, hey, when are you taking some time off so I can put out some stuff, or how does it work? <laughs> uh, you know, again, like I, I, I've been I've been really lucky to be able to make it work. Um, in whatever the scenario is, uh, if I'm really feeling compelled to do some some, some recording, um, if there's a, uh, a message I'm I'm really need, needing to get out, uh, I'll I'll make studio time, you know, kind of wherever wherever I am. So, and, and you know, there's there's been situations where I'm on tour with E Street, and uh, on my day off, I'm I'm booking a studio in whatever like Dresden, Germany, or or what have you. Um, and uh, yeah, you just you make it work. It it, it, it takes more time because of that sometimes. Um, but right. for me, that's never really a bad thing. You know, it allows it to, to settle in in a way that's not rushed and, um, hopefully, you know, you get a better product because of that. So it's been really, been really fortunate. I would imagine, I mean, this harkens back to what you just said. Like, you don't know if you could have been an artist 20 years ago. Kind of the other cool thing about being an artist today is if you did lay some stuff down and, and you had like a finished track, 
you could just throw it out that day if you wanted to, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Yeah. I probably would never do that. <laughs> it is it's a possibility. Yeah. Um, um, you know, for me, it's a, there's so much involved in that process. There's, there's, you know, perfecting the writing on the song. Um, and then there's, yeah, there's a recording of it, but then there's also, um, you know, the, the layering, uh, and, and then the mixing, you know, that takes, that takes time, um, to make sure that those levels are, are balanced and that they're right. And that the, uh, the right, the right emotions are being conveyed by what you're hearing, and uh, I, I spend a lot of time with that. That's that's really big for me. Um, maybe more than I should, <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's my that's my deal anyway. All right, let's get back to um, Eyes on the Horizon. There, the two th- other things I want to ask you about, um, and take this in any order you want. Why, uh, why, and how? I mean, I know the relationship with Tom Morello and Bruce. But why have Tom on the record? And also, I mean, it's it's an album filled with all originals, except for a Leonard Cohen song. So why choose that as the sole cover? Yeah. Um, so I'll answer the first question first. Uh, you know, having Tom on tour with E Street was, uh, was really amazing for me. We spent so much time together and got to be really, really close. And uh, he's, you know, he's, he's family to me now. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, we, we always... Uh, mentioned that we would love to work with each other, and 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 uh, um, you know, when 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 the next record was coming around, um, it was just a, a natural thing for me, just because of my affection for him as a as a brother um, and as a fellow musician, to you know obviously ask he's you know one of the greatest guitar, guitar players in the world um, <laughs> to ask him to, to to jump on the record with me. And uh, he's and he was, re- he's re- I'm going to cut you off here, Jake. I'm sorry. He's ridiculous. Like. He's, he's, insane, yeah. he's one of those guys that you just look at and you go, it, you know, I almost immediately fast forward to what is wrong with you? Like, how did you get to a place <laughs> where you're whipping out chains on the guitar? Like how, like just how creative yeah. are you that you get to, to a place where you're playing the guitar like he is? That's it. Yeah. And, and, and to really like recreate what the guitar is, you know, he, he's made his own instrument out of it. And um, yeah, I mean, just, all the things that you want to do when you're a musician, he's, 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 you know, in terms of making your own sound, um, or like allowing your distinction to stand out from everything else. Um, he's, uh, he's, he's accomplished those and beyond. He's, he's, he's insane. Uh, especially in a live setting. Um, pretty incredible. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was, it was an easy thing and a natural thing for me to say, Hey Tom, I'm making this record. <laughs> how about we do that? Uh, and how, he was so how happy it- to do it. So great. Yeah, how excited are you on the day? Like, I'm sh- like any day you get to record your own music, I'm sure is a thrill. But on the day Tom's coming to the studio, how much more exciting is it? Man, it, the whole process has been thrilling. I mean, like, it, there's, there's, you know, the fact that Tom's on the record is, is insane. But there's also like Eddie Kramer uh, mixing yeah. the record. You know, so like, the whole process has just been like out of this world. Like to to be in the room with the guy who, uh, you know tracked the Beatles and Zeppelin and uh, Rage. I mean, like he's he's done everything. He's done he, his his uh, his discography is, is the history of rock and roll. You know, um, so to be sitting in the room with him as well, it's just like I can't believe I'm I'm the artist in the chair right now. You know. Yeah. Um, Do you ever catch yourself just going, Eddie? Tell me a Stone story. Give me something on Clapton. Oh man, yeah. He's he's, he's told me a million stories. <laughs> <laughs> He's got some great ones, man. Uh, he's he's phenomenal. All right, off uh, the top of your head, what's g- give me an Eddie Kramer story that he told you during the making of this album? Can you share one with us? Oh, my God. oh man, that's some pressure there. Off the top of my head, like that. Uh, I have like a flurry uh, coming at me right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're gonna skunk me right now. I'm having one of those blank out moments. <laughs> all right, no I worries. Can see all the pictures. <laughs> Next time we have you on, then you you got to have one for us. All right, fair enough. All right, so then, fair so uh, let, let's get back to democracy. Then why? I mean, obviously, it kind of theme wise, I could see it fitting in, but um, you know that that's yeah. that you, there's probably a billion songs you could have chosen. Why Leonard Cohen's democracy? Uh, yeah, the first time I heard democracy was uh, was just a couple of years ago, um, after he passed away. Actually, there was a um, concert in Montreal, um, like a memorial concert, you know, where all these different artists play his, his music 
it was called Tower of Song, and um, it was, that was the first time I had heard that song. Um, so I, I kind of, you know, it, it grabbed me right away. I went home and looked at the lyrics, and um, you know, learned how to play on the piano, and uh, it just it just pulled me more and more. You know, each time I heard it, each time I played it. Uh, for me, just reflecting on the way that I grew up on military bases. Um, you know, my father was the conductor for the Marine Corps band, so. Um, you know, growing up on military bases and, and, and seeing how all these different people were living around me and people with different backgrounds and, and uh, different cultures, um, different political ideas, um, and how we were all, at the end of the day, like we were neighbors, you know, we were we were a family at the end of the day. Um, and then watching how that's, it's just, it feels like time's gotten further and further away from that. Um, and how democracy is, is, is something that evolves over time. Um, this concept, and, uh, and and hopefully in a better way. Uh, it's certainly better than it was when the Constitution was written. Um, you know, the inclusiveness of other people, and uh, and these are all things that are super important to me. And uh, and and again, like having grown up uh, with a deep respect for the flag and for the country, um, You know, having that patriotic sense is, is, is a, a big part of of what's falling through my through my blood, through my core. Um, but it's something I want to I want to I want to I want to continue to believe in. I don't want to be disen- disenfranchised. And uh, um, yeah, so that song became really important to incorporate in, into this record, and uh, really helped to cement the theme um, of the album as well. How far along into the process of this album did you decide to do that record? Was it early on? Was it in the middle, late? Uh, we were probably halfway through, actually, when we put that song on there. Um, yeah, and 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 it sincerely it it it, it changed a little bit of the course of um, uh, of the theme. Um, I ended up taking off a couple songs. Um, that, that didn't quite make the statements as as strongly. I mean, the song is just a brilliant song. Like it's Leonard Cohen is a, is a master with words, um, and, and and an incredible, you know, incredible songwriter. Um, you know, so it, there's a certain like sense of car <laughs> that came with putting that track on on the record, which was a little intimidating, obviously, but um, but also meant that you know. A, I had to make some statements a little bit more clear and um, some sentiments a little bit more, um, and I felt a little bit deeper, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, I ended up writing a couple other songs to, to, to put on there after that. And, uh, yeah, yeah, so it really, really helped to cement what the record would be about. That's cool, man. I, I like hearing that. I like hearing, too, that it inspired you to write some other stuff, too. That's That's kind of awesome. Yeah, cheers, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm grateful for that too. I'm grateful for his writing. Absolutely, uh, you and me both, my friend. You and me both, my friend. You and me <laughs> both. <laughs> um, Jay Clemens uh, is our guest. Eyes on the Horizon is the new record. Eyes on the Horizon is the new album. Uh, available everywhere today. Stone Pony tomorrow night, and then uh, you're doing the See Here Now Festival, which is awesome. I think we're going yeah. to be there. I'm not entirely sure, but we're supposed to be there. Uh, and then you're just out running around through October and the early part of November. I know we heard um, some rumbling. We've been following, you know, obviously, you know, Bruce and the East Street Band. He's already talking about some stuff for next year that he's got a record in mind and uh, there'll be a tour behind it. Uh, what can you tell us? Has there been some internal discussions amongst the members on when you'll get together and record? Yeah, I have no idea, to be honest with you. We'll see what happens. Um you know, I heard the rumors like everybody else did, and uh, it's exciting to, uh, you know, to find out what exactly he's got going on. Um, you know, he put out Western Stars, and it was just a fantastic album. Um, you know, to, to to hear that he has written music for an Street Band record as well is a uh, is exciting. Yeah, so curious to see what that's all about, and uh, I look forward to it just as much as everyone else will. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see what's up. We'll see what's on the horizon. So you guys don't <laughs> even know yet. You're, there's no like, oh, it's going to be, you know, keep February open because that's when you still don't know yet. Yeah, I mean, you know, there may be like some murmurs or uh, of conversation, but like, yeah, there's nothing, uh, nothing cemented at the, at the moment. Come on, so, Jake, give uh, me the just... exact date and location where you're going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I told you all the things I know, man. 
know? So that's your uncle's too. <laughs> All right. Well, that's awesome. Well, listen, my friend, uh, I'm a, I'm a fan. Um, the, the first record was really good. I liked it. I, I'm, I'm, I've only given this new album, you know, uh, a couple of listens so far since I've had it, but I'm, I'm just loving it. You know, again, like I said, uh, the, the, the dynamics of the songs and the differences between one track to the next while still maintaining a theme you know, is, is really good, but oh, swan song to start that record. You know what, you know, it's funny swan song to start the record, um, was a phenomenal choice and hold tight to start your last record. Was a fit like you are a thousand percent on record starters, my friend. Let me just leave you that compliment. Wow, man. Yeah. Wow. Jeez. That's a, uh, I, I really appreciate that. It's incredible. It's not easy. Cause by the <laughs> way, I mean, for me, I listen to a lot of stuff, right? So it's like, <laughs> you know, first track is kind of an important deal for me. And for whatever yeah. reason, your both your first tracks totally sucked me into the rest of the record. So, uh, wow. keep, keep doing what you're doing, my friend. I'm a fan and, and, uh, I appreciate the time you gave us this morning. Oh um, man, it was a pleasure and an honor. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And, uh, if we're at, uh, I'm going to talk to your peeps. If we wind up at see here now, you got to come over and uh, hang with us a bit. Cool. Yeah. Love to. It sounds great. It's going right. to be an awesome festival. Awesome, man. I'm looking forward to it, too. Jay Clemens, uh, Eyes on the Horizon, out today. Good luck with the record, man, and good luck with the tour. Have fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. you. All right, man. Later. (laughs) Bye. All right, there he goes. Jay Clemens, E Street Band, solo album, number two, sophomore record out, Eyes on the Horizon, I'm telling you, it's good. Like I, I, uh, I really like it. The uh, the first track, uh, I'm not blowing smoke. I'm listening to, you know, I put the thing on, and this first song comes up, and it's this uh, swan, and I'm just like, oh my god, this is like a, this is like a whole, Gil Scott Heron thing going on here. And then you get into another track, and it's kind of like, man, this has got like a, a little bit of a Rage Against the Machine thing going on here. Uh, Swang Song, Consumption Town, Ayaduya. I don't even know. I should have asked him how to pronounce that. That's a great one. His rendition of Democracy is pretty good. He's got a track, We the People, Eyes on the Horizon. Uh, very of the now. Very, it's funny. The first record was, I think he might have mentioned this. The first record was very introspective. This record is all about what is going on in the world. Similarly, the way we talked with Taylor Goldsmith and uh, Dawes's you know, newest album passwords, that was sort of the same thing. It was holding that mirror up and this is how I'm seeing the world kind of a vibe. That's totally what I get from this record. Check it out. If you get a chance, Jay Clemens, eyes in the horizons. My thanks to him for getting us a little bit closer to the music this morning on the morning show with Anthony.